Hey guys, it's Jeff. Uh, this is part 11 already of the uh, dust work. <laughs> there goes my furnace. 8.8 .8 centimeter off 90 full mag, uh, 135th scale. I got a kit in the mail yesterday and I want to thank Tim. And Tim, I really appreciate it. Um, I didn't even knew this, know this existed. But uh, he says this is going to be a great addition to the full mag belt. Okay. What this is, is uh, a siding tool. A tele telemeter. Telemeter. Okay, let me read you a little bit about it. I just looked this up on Google. It says the German telemeter, KDO Mod 40, also known as the Commando Garrett 40, a World War II anti-aircraft director was used to direct the fire of major caliber weapons. It was designed in the 1930s to replace aging equipment and accepted for service in 1940. The KDO Mod 40 is an analog computer that uses a visual observation to determine firing parameters. It can detect targets at altitudes of up to 12,000 meters. And it has a slant range of up to 18,000 meters. The KDO Mod 40 is operated by five men and can go from acquiring a target to firing the first round in less than 30 seconds. That's pretty impressive. It's getting to the point now where I'm really seriously thinking about some kind of a diorama. It's going to take me a while to get it all together and, you know, uh, get it all planned and figure out what I'm going to do. I want to include the the uh, telemeter. And uh, not too long ago, I bought this. Okay. Uh, a buddy of mine, George, at uh, that Mofo Damon channel. I'll put a link in the description to it. Uh, he built this. Okay, and if you notice, there's a shield on it. Uh, my understanding is that some some of the uh, Volmag trucks came with them and some without. The ones used in the main part of Europe uh, were gray and did not have them. Uh, the ones that were painted like a desert yellow or a desert tan and used in like Hungary and North Africa and that kind did have them. That's the last thing I can come up with. I found out that Edward makes a photo etch shield set. It'll be here in a couple of days and I'll look at it see if I'm going to use it. I was kind of thinking about doing the the uh, Hungarian version, the yellow with the uh, uh, green and red camouflage. It's not all been decided yet. Also uh, on the back of the truck here I had several guys uh, Give me their thoughts on the uh, color of the ammo storage. I really appreciate it. Um, some thought it was just going to be like in a red primer. Some thought it was going to be white. Some thought it was going to be like an ivory. I'm not sure yet what color I'm going to go with. I've left this, excuse me, I left this as a separate part on purpose. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is finish this. I'm going to put the back part on here today. And then I'm going to attach these two together and make this one unit. And I'm going to check and make sure it all sets on the frame well. And uh, then when I get, uh, when I'm happy with this fitting, the top, okay, then I'll slip this back inside of it after I've painted it, depending on what color I paint it. And uh, that'll finish the main part of this. And then uh, we'll worry about the doors and all that kind of stuff, depending on how I decide to do the diorama. <laughs> Lots to think about. Anyway, uh, I want to get a couple more German vehicles. Um, I may get uh, a full mag. I don't know. Um, I'd want to get maybe a couple of, uh, I can't even think, the Kubel wagons. Um, 
not not sure yet I want to have a few vehicles for a diorama the centerpiece being the full mag and then having the uh, the telemeter and maybe another gun I'm gonna have to look into um, you know um, more more figures and that type of thing what I'm gonna do and a base I've got some uh, um, XPS foam I may use that for a base well we'll see got a lot of things to think about anyway um, let's go ahead and go down the bench and I'll show you kind of what I want to do today okay all right be right back okay uh, just a quick look at the instructions D18 is the piece that will go across the back of the truck the very tailgate um, and it's got a couple of doors up in the top and then it's going to have some wire spools that'll uh, I, I believe these are communication cables I'm not real sure a lot of this stuff I don't know but I'm fairly certain it's communication cables the uh, telemeter and also the uh, trailer for the uh, 88 gun that I've got uh, all have those on there and I believe that you know that's how they communicated with each other well I want to get this this um, piece on the back here I've left this separate on purpose the center part here um, I'll get that painted and then we'll just slip it in I haven't decided yet which side I'm gonna have open I, I hope to have at least a few compartments open but um, We'll, we'll figure that out as we go on. Anyway, um, on here we've got some, this is the outriggers, and we've got some parts that need to be put together that are in halves. So I've cut those out. I, I want to do the N26s. This, these are for one side and these are for the other. So get those glued together and let them dry well and clean the seams up before I actually need the parts. As you can see they they go underneath and they go to the sides. My plans are to build this in the firing position. Have the, the, the sides down, have the outriggers out, and have it with the gun pointed up. Um, I may even try and do something with I don't know. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. I would love to make it look like it's being fired, you know, with with uh, smoke and whatnot coming out the end. But, uh, I've never tried that before, and I'm not sure how it would work out. I've seen a few others that have done an amazing job with uh, bigger guns uh, looking like they're being fired. So anyway, let's go down to the bench, and let's see what we can do, okay? Uh, okay, um, just real quick here. These are the two halves for the for one of the outriggers. Okay, they go like this, and there will be a. I'm not sure if it's hydraulic or if it's just cranked down, but it'll be a uh, a steel post that comes out of here that'll sit on the ground to help support the vehicle. And of course, they supply that part in plastic. I have never ever had any luck really making the cylinders and stuff like that actually look like cylinders. So what I bought, and these are this is just ever so slightly too big. This is a two millimeter piece of aluminum. I bought a bunch of them on uh, Amazon. It's just barely too big. I may be able to drill that out, or I may be able to turn this down a little bit on my lathe but that'll be my plan for the uh, outriggers will be instead of using a plastic piece and trying to paint it I'll polish up this piece of aluminum a little bit I think that'll look a lot more realistic okay so that's my thoughts on that I bought a way more than I needed here it's two millimeter by 150 millimeter, 20 pieces from China. Well, I've got, you know, I just keep a bunch of this stuff. 
well, for another project or something. I don't remember. These weren't very expensive. But I've got plenty for other projects for the future. Whoops, sorry. Didn't mean to bump the camera. Okay, um, I've got these little pieces for the outriggers, the parts that will mount to the frame. I want to glue those, and uh, that way they can be setting, and then later on when we need them, they will be hopefully nice and firm, and I'll have the joints all taken care of. Let's just do this real quick, make sure I've got the right one. There's a left and a right. You gotta make sure that you don't confuse the two. Okay, that's correct. And I'll sand the seam and if I need to do any filling or something, I'll do all that later. Okay, but that's the way that goes right there. This is just planning ahead. These will not be used for a while. But I want to have them ready to go when I do. Put a huge excess of glue on there, it looks like. Whoops. Okay. I've got some clamps. I'll go ahead and put a clamp on those just to make sure that everything is good. Let's see where are they at. Um, I have them somewhere here. Ah, too much stuff in too many places. Okay. And then the other one. There will be some outriggers on the front also. But uh, their mounts are different. I just want to make sure these are all set before we need them. on there okay those are good okay and these will be glued on later they go over that and uh, create a joint so that can be swung open and closed but I don't really need to do anything with that yet here is the back of this Okay, it's got a really tiny lip that it sits on. My thinking, this fits in here, okay, and this will fit up against it, but it's very, very tight and there actually are some grooves it's supposed to fit into. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Even if I have to sand this down a little bit, what I want to do is set this aside and I want to make sure that I have a really nice joint on here. And then if whatever I have to do to this to get it to fit later is what I'll do if I have to sand it down or whatever. But nobody's going to see the joints inside. They're going to see the joints here. So I don't want to have a big gap or anything here. I want to have them just as nice as I can. And then I'll worry about the inside joints later. So let's go ahead and get this glued on. It's a very, very small edge. I'm sorry. I don't know. Try and make it to where you guys can see. Hello.
I have to sand this joint, it's not a problem. Before I put the uh, doors and everything on, get the height just where I want it, and I'll double check the top and make sure it's good before we before I'm finished. Okay, I want to put just a little glue right here. Get that right there where I got a really nice joint. Okay. Want to make sure this edge is good. The bottom edge is not as critical. Let's make sure the top edge is good. So when the that looks just fine. We'll see how this goes. That's going to be really nice. There's an ever so slight gap around there. I mean, hairline width. I'll, I may fill that just the tiniest little bit, just to make it look really nice. But that's going to be that's going to be just fine. And then later on. When I drop this in, if it's too long or doesn't fit, see it's just right there. I think it'll drop in. If it won't quite drop in, I'll sand this edge just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to leave this for just a little bit to set up, and then when I come back, I want to attach this and this together and get it on the frame and make sure that that everything lines up good with that. Oops. All right, be back in just a little bit. Thanks, guys. Okay, there's the tailgate or the back, whatever you want to call it. It's all glued in. It's had about an hour or so to sit, so it's it's in there pretty good. Um, nice and plush across the top here. This will sit on there really nice. Okay, got just a barely a little bit of gap around, but I think it's going to be just fine. If I need to, I can, I can fill that little bit of a gap there. It's not a problem. If I had thought ahead, I may have sanded one side of this and just narrowed this just ever so slightly for a better fit, but I'm I'm happy with it. I'm not going to change it at all. You can see it. It fits real well. Okay. This here, the instructions tell you to fit it before you fit the back and everything. I didn't want to do that because I wanted to make sure that these seams were really good. This doesn't fit with this in without modifying it. So I slit, I very, very slightly sanded the back end of this, just ever so slightly. And now it drops right in. Okay. And the top will fit. Everything's good. This I'll leave loose until I get some paint on it. Still thinking about colors. But that's going to be real easy to paint like that. And then I can set that in there and uh, put some foam or something in there and uh, keep the paint from getting inside and then set this on. And that all fits really good. Okay. So the next thing I want to do don't damage anything is glue this to this just like this and it's going to make this all one piece 
fits really good. Okay. It's going to be a good strong joint. What I want to do is glue this and then set it on the frame and uh, make sure it sets flat and even on the, flame, on the frame. Um, one other thing, there's this box that goes back here and there's some cutouts that go over these little bumps, little raised parts. I guess there's supposed to be some kind of clamp. This would be a good part to use to help square the frame too. I didn't realize at the beginning. This doesn't touch anything. It just sits there. You don't put anything in it. It's got no real purpose other than to just take up space. This will not touch it. Okay, will not interfere with it as far as I can tell. It just sits right in there. It does kind of help align it. Um, so we'll put that on centered and then we'll use we'll put this over to kind of help uh, help align everything but there's no real interference problems so let's go ahead and glue this on and then we'll glue that together and set them all together and we'll kind of see how how things are looking here grocery order coming in just a little bit I gotta watch out for not a big deal okay that will set just like that okay a little bit of an edge back there that'll help locate this but it doesn't interfere with it Okay, it just sets, it sets right inside this space in between here and here. So when we put that on, it should just drop over. That'll help locate it, but it's not causing any interference with it, as far as I can tell. And this should fit above it with no problem. That's the nice thing about doing the outside parts first, yeah. Uh, you make sure that the seams are good and then worry about the inside. Okay, so I think we're good. Let's set that over here for a minute. And we'll glue these two together. Okay, just like that. Okay, it's going to be a little tricky to clamp. We'll see what we can do here. I'll have to go around it with glue several times. Make sure I don't miss anything. that lots of surfaces to glue it should be a really strong joint when it's all together I'm sorry if I'm so close you can't see Places I don't want it. Okay. Try and go get that a little more. Sorry, guys, it's kind of hard to do this and. 
show you. That looks pretty darn good. Okay. That makes for a nice size little unit there. I'm not worried about this right now. Let's go ahead and turn this upside down. Well, let's see. Let's do it this way. I want to turn this upside down on here. And then turn this over and set it on here just to make sure everything is good. Okay. It all looks really good. Spacing-wise, everything looks really good. This needs to go over just a tiny bit. Okay. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. I'm going to just let that set, and I'm not going to touch it for a while. I see one spot here I'd like to get a little more glue on. Hang on here. Can always come back later and do a little bit more if I see a need for it. Okay, let's switch this around. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, I've got a few other little parts that I've got trimmed up that we can go ahead and start working on. Um, these are the, back down, these are the hose reels. And they are in multiple pieces. I don't really want to completely assemble them yet, but we can get some of the pieces made up. Um, I can't even pick it up. Here we go. Okay, there's the pieces for one hose reel. The way I get it, this is supposed to sit on here. And it really doesn't have an exact location. Just kind of sits on there. You'd think that the part would be curved a little bit if you wanted it to. It's got to be at a slight angle so it'll go in between the, the uh, reels. Kind of funny. Okay. We've got these. Let's do that like this again. Okay. And then this will go on the other side. Boy, that furnace has been running a lot. Don't even know what the temperature is outside, but maybe it's colder than I think it is. Okay, there's the middle one. I might leave that part off. 
Um, I'm thinking about wrapping them with something, and that might just be in the way. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll put that on later. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a clamp or just what. Then we've got these, which are the uprights, and they're in two halves that have got to be assembled. The actual uh, um, axle that goes with, goes through this is extremely tiny and uh, I'll probably be replacing that with some wire just to uh, make the thing a little more substantial let's see I should use tweezers. Okay, there's one. It's kind of kind of like a U channel. Just gives a little more detail, but it's just more parts to put together. Okay, I'll do the other half. Let's see here. Very, very tiny. And it wants to move on me. White tack is, well, it it gets hard, and then if you work it and kind of get your, you know, heat from your fingers into it, then it softens up and gets sticky. Try that some more. I noticed Nigel's posted a new video of his build of this. I'll have to watch it when I get through here. There's links to Nigel's channel in the description. And I'll put a link to George's uh, video on that 88 kit also. He did a great job with that. It's a uh, winter scene that he did. I might just use the figures out of that kit or I might I'll probably build it just just to have more for the diorama it includes some figures and um, a motorcycle okay I got my my uh, white tag got a little sticky with the glue but there's the other other half of one so I'm going to go ahead and call that good. I'll put the other one together off camera. But um, I'll take some pictures of this so you can see kind of our progress. And then that'll probably go ahead and do it for today, okay? Alrighty, guys. I got groceries coming here in just a few minutes. We'll talk to you later, okay? Have a great day. Bye bye.